is often overlooked or completely omitted in conversations about the fundamental concepts within fighting games. People will talk about spacing, poking, execution, control, attacking, defending, risk, reward, fireball, uppercut, but not rhythm. Ability to assess, establish, and manipulate rhythm is what makes a skilled player's offense so oppressive. It's what enables people to whiff punish pokes with high success rate. And it's what makes a great player's movement so hard to predict. Put simply, rhythm is the intersection between pattern and timing. Let's cut the music and work through an example. Humans have an innate knack for pattern recognition. It is hardwired into the human brain to find and recognize patterns. We are constantly looking for patterns, even when we are not doing so intentionally. This ability is fundamental to the way we perceive things, and it deeply informs our decision making. In truth, the majority of the time, our reactions are not so much truly reactions as they are us acting on predictions based upon information we consciously and subconsciously gathered beforehand. What we observe before always determines what we expect to come next. Our predictions prime our reactions. What you've been hearing and seeing is a metronome ticking at a steady 72 beats per minute. And I'm willing to bet that you noticed some mistakes in the video just a few seconds ago. After just a few ticks, you naturally picked up on the rhythm, and when I made the metronome skip a beat, you were able to tell immediately, even though you were focusing on the sound of my voice and the text on screen. That is the innate human propensity for pattern recognition at work. Now let's discuss how this concept manifests itself within fighting games. Imagine that you're playing Street Fighter and fighting against Ryu. Ryu is resolved to employ a classic strategy, zoning you out with fireball and uppercut. You need to counter this strategy with a well-timed jumping attack. If Ryu throws his fireballs with a consistent rhythm, like along with this steady beat, you should easily be able to key into that rhythm and at some point be able to predict when he will throw a fireball next. For the sake of our thought experiment, let's assume the following. Ryu will throw three fireballs. If you jump over the third and final fireball, you can strike Ryu, and you win. If you jump too soon or too late, Ryu will react with an uppercut and anti-air you, in which case you will lose. If you don't jump at all, Ryu will put you into a checkmate situation, and you will lose. Try to really imagine yourself in this situation. Look for the moment where you can jump and catch Ryu just before or as he's throwing his third and final fireball. Try to react. Are you ready? Here we go. Hadouken. 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 That wasn't very difficult, was it? If Ryu throws his fireball along with this steady beat, employing a consistent rhythm, you can easily pick up on the pattern and predict when he will throw a fireball next, making it much easier to react. Let's try again, this time just a little faster. Remember, envision yourself having to jump over the third and final fireball. Still not very hard, is it? No matter how fast or slow, as long as Ryu maintains a consistent rhythm, you should easily be able to time and react to that final fireball. Now let's slow it back down and try it once more. Was that time more difficult? 
I can assure you that was no cheap trick. Try again. Really imagine yourself in this scenario. Try to react and jump over the final fireball. Hadouken! 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 Ryu established and then broke rhythm to catch you off guard and encourage you to take actions from which he would benefit. Let's look at another example using Street Fighter V. The relationship between tick throw and what some people call the no shimmy shimmy or jab weight. Here's the classic tick throw. Everyone and their mother has seen this before. It can catch you off guard because of its speed but it's fairly easy to see coming and fairly easy to defend against. Look at the rhythm. Tick, walk, throw. Three quick actions. Call it half beat, half beat, half beat. Now let's look at jab weight. It's not like a regular shimmy. When performing a regular shimmy, one approaches the range at which they can threaten the opponent with throw and then moves away in a feint. Jab weight doesn't include much of a feint at all. You don't move when you do it, and there isn't much visually to encourage your opponent to throw tech. Yet still, this stratagem hits a lot of people because it's a manipulation of a very common rhythm within Street Fighter V. Jab, wait, tick, pause. Call it half beat, whole beat. Where Street Fighter V players expect half beat, half beat, half beat, half beat, whole beat, where the whole beat is the weight and jab weight, causes the opponent's response to come too quickly, opening up their defense. As you can see, reactions are not wholly a function of speed. Humans anticipate to prime their reactions. This natural propensity to anticipate is what makes stratagems like zoning or jab weight work at all. In fact, all fighting games have rhythm manipulation baked into their core mechanics, whether it be through moves with different variations and speeds, staggerable or delayable attack sequences, or simply through the basic movement. One can infer or imply a rhythm in any situation using experience and common game knowledge wielded with purposeful intent. But be careful not to make assumptions too quickly or you might find yourself getting mired in a common pitfall many intermediate players find themselves in fighting against what you think the opponent should be doing and not what the opponent is actually doing. To successfully use rhythm manipulation to one's advantage, one needs to be assured that they and the opponent are in the same frame of reference when it comes to perceiving a situation. Remember, predictions prime reactions. What we observe before informs what we expect to happen next. Predictions are based on expectation, and expectations are based on the perceived context of the situation. Let's take a step back and look at what is meant by context when it comes to reactions and decision making. Say we're having a lengthy conversation about mountains and terrain, and I show you this image and ask you to point out the mountains and the sun. You may say, ah, yes, here I can see the mountains with snow-capped peaks represented under the sun in the middle of the sky. But if instead we were having a conversation about reading, writing, and the English alphabet, you may say, ah, yes, here I see a line with the letter O and another line with several capital letter A's. By first establishing a particular context, it causes one to perceive from a certain frame of reference. This frame of reference affects one's expectations of the situation, and thus affects one's reactions. 
the context of the situation can lead you or the opponent to anticipate and see something that may or may not be there. This includes rhythms. Ensuring that you and your opponent are on the same frame of reference is key to effective rhythm manipulation. One must first establish a rhythm and ensure that it is established clearly before breaking rhythm becomes an effective tactic. Now that we're familiar with the concept, let's discuss how one can practice identifying and manipulating rhythm. Let's start with the easiest method. Try watching a few matches of your favorite fighting game and specifically look for rhythms. Start by looking for the situations and sequences that led to someone landing a hit. Pay close attention to the timing of actions and how many times that situation or situations like it have appeared over the course of the match. Don't be afraid to stop, rewind, and replay the footage several times. All of the match footage featured in this video was chosen specifically because each match contains moments that clearly showcase rhythm manipulation. If you're looking for replays to view, you can start there. You can find links to all of the featured matches in the video description. While useful, combing over match footage can only take you so far. One can theorize effective sequences and possible ways to alter them, but ultimately, the effectiveness of stratagems formed around rhythm manipulation are going to depend on the specific opponent you try to employ them on. To truly practice observing and manipulating rhythm, you'll need a training partner. So go out and find one. Anyone will do as long as they're willing to discuss and communicate about the practice with you. You can even share this video and ask the person you shared it with to practice. Once you have a partner, you can start by simply playing a first to five or a first to 10 set with them. You'd be surprised at just how much you can pick up on in an extended set. Remember that these sets are practice and neither of you should be going all out. Don't worry about winning or losing. Save mental resources so that you can play explicitly with the concept of rhythm in mind. During and after the sets, discuss with your partner what rhythms you employed or identified. Discuss what sequences were effective and what sequences were not. Discuss the intent behind your actions and the effect those actions had on the gameplay. If you want to practice more directly, here are some drills you can use. Set strict limits on the options that you both can choose from so that there are only very few possible situations you can create. You want to force each player to get creative with how they apply the limited tools allowed by the drill. Choose a limited set of offensive options or a particular offensive sequence. Then, for one round, have player one attempt the sequence and player two attempt to defend or evade. Successful or not, reset the situation and try it again. Take turns by alternating which one of you is on offense and defense every other round. See how far you can get and how effective you can make it by manipulating the rhythm. This can become extremely difficult, and it will really test your abilities to not only establish and break rhythms, but your awareness of when your opponent has keyed into them as well. Rhythm suffuses every aspect of fighting games, and it's probably something that you've always been aware of, but never really noticed. Mastery of rhythm can mean the difference between making a game-winning decision or a losing one. But I mean, hey, what do I know? This video and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons. I would like to extend a special shout out to my tier three patrons. If you would like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing here on YouTube, liking or disliking the video, and leaving a comment below.